Hello, my name is Andy McClellan. I'm a certified trainer and consultant with Environmental Education Associates, here to talk about EPA's new requirements for lead dust testing. This video focuses on the procedures and practices for lead dust testing, as defined by U.S. HUD, the Housing and Urban Development folks, and U.S. EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency. These agencies have established procedures for the collection of wipe samples to determine the presence of lead dust and have set standards against which to measure if the lead dust levels pose a hazard to occupants of the space for the dwelling testing. Lead dust testing is required under the EPA regulation for lead hazard control, as well as in most pre-1978 housing renovation, repair, or painting projects. HUD and many state health or housing regulations have required dust testing for several years. Dust testing is really the best method for detecting if lead dust is on surfaces like floors, window sills, or window wells, and is an excellent way to determine if lead hazards are present after abatement, renovation, repair, or maintenance projects. Lead dust testing is conducted by certified lead sampling technicians, lead inspectors, or lead risk assessors. They follow some basic procedures to make sure that sampling is done properly. Environmental Education Associates offers EPA accredited training for all three certifications. Now let's get to the testing. We're typically testing at three interior locations in each room where lead paint related work occurred. Although we'll cap the number of rooms, we sample at four if lead work occurred in four or more rooms. Samples are collected from areas a child will have access and are known sources of exposure. The floors, the window sills, and the window wells. That's an interior sill, by the way, and the window well is the area where the window rests when it's shut. Hi, my name is Mark Newman, EPA Certified Lead Inspector Risk Assessor. Andy did a nice job explaining why we take these samples and the locations that we take these samples. But before we take these samples, we'll need some basic sampling equipment, such as sampling wipes, gloves, and a container to hold the sample for delivery to a laboratory for analysis. We'll talk more about those labs in a minute. The wipes are manufactured specifically for lead dust testing. It's an individually packaged, pre-moistened wipe that is designed to satisfy an ASTM standard for this testing. The gloves are typically disposable latex, although latex-free gloves are also acceptable as long as what you use is non-powdered and non-sterilized. Sample containers, or centrifuge tubes, are hard plastic, non-glass containers. They should be non-sterilized plastic tubes equipped with a sealable lid. They are typically 50 milliliter in size. The use of disposable shoe covers helps to minimize the transfer of settled dust from one location to another. It's really important that you don't cross-contaminate your work. A reusable template is a 12 inch by 12 inch plastic frame used for sampling floors. The size of the area we sample is important, so a template helps cut down on errors. We'll need to measure the exact area of samples collected from the windows too, so a tape measure or ruler is necessary. Sampling follows an ASTM procedure that calls for the wipe to take a couple passes over the sample area. We start in one corner and work our way down with an S-shaped motion. Then fold the sample in and take another pass left to right with the same motion, then fold. We finish with another wipe around the perimeter and place the sample in a tube. We'll measure the area down to 1 8 inch and record the sample number, and dimensions on the tube with a permanent marker. 
Be sure to cap the sample immediately after sampling and measure the area after you collect the sample. These practices cut down on cross-contamination, or what we call false positives. Remember to change your gloves after each sample, too. Once the samples are collected, we'll fill out a chain of custody. This officially documents transfer of the samples from the sampler to the laboratory. The chain of custody, or COC, has to include sample labeling, including the sample numbers and dimension, along with identifying information on the locations, samplers, and dates. It's also critical that the sampler indicate the sample turnaround time, which is the amount of time from when the samples arrive at the lab until the analysis is reported. Standard turnaround time is 48 hours for analysis. Labs must be accredited by the EPA to analyze samples for compliance with HUD and EPA requirements. States may also have their own accreditation requirements too. We'll be covering labs and lab analysis at another time. Once the lab completes analysis, they will transmit the results, typically by email these days. The results should be compared against the EPA standards. For floors, it's 40 micrograms per square foot. For window sills, it's 250 micrograms per square foot. And for wells, it's 400 micrograms per square foot. Samples with lead concentrations above those standards should be considered unacceptable. White sampling isn't that difficult to master, but the procedures and record keeping can be complicated. EPA and HUD require that anyone who collects white samples after renovations or maintenance activities affected by the RRP or conducts clearance after abatement obtain a certification by completing EPA accredited training. Visit www.environmentaleducation.com for more information on this and other environmental certification training. Thanks and take care.